What's up guys? So today's video is going to be about Youth Art Month um, and I'm going to be sort of uh, addressing some political issues, um, one in particular, uh, and I did sort of cover this and was concerned about this in January, uh, and it has sort of come to fruition now, so we're going to address it, um, and with everything else that was happening last month, there wasn't really a slot to put it in there, uh, but Youth Art Month is sort of the easiest segue into this, so I'm going to quickly uh, go over the top of uh, what is sort of uh, involved and the history behind it and then I'll get into my little uh, political uh, article that I've got here. Uh, so according to Wikipedia, uh, Youth Art Month is a month of promoting art and art education in the United States. It's observed in March with thousands of American schools uh, participating often with the involvement of local art museums and civic organisations. Now, it does obviously say there that it's uh, celebrated in uh, the US. I'm not in the US, uh, but the article that I'm going to be talking about does, it does deal with the arts. And I am a youth, so this uh, it's well. Um, so, uh, Background, Youth Art Month was founded by the Crayon Watercolour and Craft Institute, the um, predecessor of the Art and Creative Materials uh, Institute, which from here on out is going to be referred to as ACME, uh, in cooperation with the National Art Education Association uh, in 1961 and was initially called Children's Art Month. Its goal was to emphasise the value of participating in art for all children, uh, and it was later renamed Youth Art Month in 69 to include secondary school students. Uh, in 84, ACME created the Council for Arts uh, Education, CFAE, uh, to oversee the annual uh, observation of Youth Art Month. And as of 2009, the CFAE consists of representatives of ACME, uh, the uh, National Art Education Association, the SHIP, which is a group of manufacturers of art materials, and the uh, General Federation of Women's Clubs. Uh, the Craft and Hobby Association is also involved in Youth Art Month. Um, now the major thing that they do in the States for this is they have a nationwide competition for Youth Art Month uh, called School Flags Across America Flying High, and as part of that competition, uh, each state uh, Youth Art Month chairperson selects a theme representative of that state uh, and of the spirit of uh, Youth Art Month and students design flags around that theme. The winning design from each, state, from each state is then made into an actual flag and the 50 student design flags are then displayed throughout Washington DC following an opening ceremony held the first week of March to commemorate the start of Youth Art Month. The winning students and their families are invited to attend this opening ceremony in Washington DC and the flags are displayed throughout the city of March. Uh, and then displayed at um, a National Art Month booth at the annual convention uh, of uh, the National Art Education Association. Um, so obviously, uh, doing a much better job than Australia is. Uh, the um, headline for this article is Cultural Leadership versus Business as Usual. Um, it's then got a little subheading, which is just a quote from later on in the article, so I won't uh, read it twice. Um, so the article just sort of dives in straight into it. Um, it will be business as usual for arts policy and funding, said Paul Fletcher, Federal Minister for Communications, Cyber Safety and the Arts. Notice how out of the three words in his title, arts is the last one. Uh, communications and cyber safety come first and second. If he's trying to tell us that the arts is going to not be affected in any way, and it's the last out of three now, um, the, um, before uh, this, this article will eventually get into the merging of a super department, uh, and before that merge, uh, the arts department was the communi uh, communi 
communication and the arts. So it adds cyber safety in between communication and arts. Is also another thing that we should be uh, concerned about. But cyber safety is now taking more of a precedence over the arts when it originally wasn't even involved in the uh, department of the main. So it's coming since the merge. Uh, and yeah, um, but anyway, uh, so um, business as usual for arts and funding. Uh, Albert just said, uh, commenting on the disappearance of the word arts in the title of his government department, which will be stated in a second. Uh, a statement that anyone interested in the quality of life in Australia should not find reassuring. Business as usual under this government does not mean the innovative, evidence-based investment needed to ensure a thriving, internationally competitive cultural sector. The omission of arts from the departmental title must be seen in the wider context of relentless erosion of arts funding, a lack of cultural policy, and a disregard for the knowledge of experts. Um, many may be fearing further reductions in funding, but it's the lack of public visibility and leadership that should be our primary concern. Without now explicitly removed from the government's top level agenda, what kinds of cultural leadership are required? What difficult decisions should we ask about our own leadership values? And how can we communicate the value of art in a political environment that refuses to recognise its worth? The new super department, in my opinion, not that super. Um, honestly, kind of feels like a bit of a, uh, a gut punch to all of these sectors. But uh, it now has a responsibility for arts, uh, and it's called the Department of Transport, Infrastructure, Regional Development and Communications. Uh, as I just said, communications and the arts used to be that uh, government department. Uh, and so by putting communications in and leaving the word arts out, which could have fit in quite easily, it's a four-letter word. Um, yeah. Um, it does state that here, a title could, uh, a title that could easily have incorporated a small but meaningful four-letter word, arts. Um, PM Scott Morrison's decision to remove it should be understood as highly symbolic, the article reads. Uh, this is a government where words matter and messages are tightly crafted. The disappearance of the arts represents an ideological urge to diminish the status, role and regard for culture in the political and public sphere and to portray the arts as a superfluous luxury item. But why would the government choose to undermine the national importance of arts? Some have suggested that this disregard is economically driven, but this doesn't add up. Uh, given that by the government's own calculations, cultural and creative activities contributed a much touted $111.7 billion, that is spelled with a B, um, um, Yes, $111.7 billion to Australia's economy in 2016-2017 financial year. Though arts as such are only one part of that overall activity uh, in the cultural and creative uh, sector, uh, they are still a huge employer with arts and recreation employing more people than mining in 2018-2019. And to any Australian watching this, you can pretty much already like, 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 I would assume that you would already know how massive of an industry mining is in Australia. Uh, to anyone that doesn't know, mining is one of our biggest industries. Uh, it's one of our uh, biggest exports. Um, I could get a little bit more into mining and how it factors into and another thing that was in my January video that I sort of touched on there. But that's really another video for another time uh, and I will... I will get back to that um, because it is a topic that needs to be discussed. Um, the government has justified the decision to roll arts together with infrastructure and transport, two things that don't have anything to do with art, by citing reduced bureaucracy and improved decision making. With the best returns on any public investment plan, the policy is inf are informed by expertise and is responsive to changing world conditions. This move to consolidate all of these government departments into one massive body um, was, pointed, was made pointedly without consultation and reduces the uh, influence of informed public servants. This is not a question of the level of funding, though it may well become that too. Uh, value for money 
uh, requires attentive, ambitious investment which relies on engaged and visible policy debate. As we've just said, this was done very much under the rug and unless we were part of uh, the, um, the arts scene and very politically uh, aware in, in that side of things as well, you probably have not even heard of this issue, uh, which is worrying to say the least. Um, beyond econo art economics though, there is overwhelming evidence that art contributes to health, well-being and social cohesion and um, the link for this website is in the description of below. That uh, sentence from overwhelming evidence to social cohesion is all uh, one big uh, link which will take you to a PDF where you can read up more on that um, and, and on the evidence there. But surely no government could ignore those benefits, right? But we also know that um, that art has those positive effects because it builds empathy for others, fosters multiple ways of seeing the world, and makes us feel more connected to our community. Uh, in a world of wedge politics, where power is increasingly pushing simple messages and vilifying opposition, the qualities that make art socially valuable also make it politically inconvenient, uh, which could be why politics are trying to get it out of the way um, and by doing it quietly they don't have this big uproar either um, at least that's what they would think except for the fact that the arts and recreation sector hires more people than mining um, now if art is so valuable to the public where was the public outcry uh, so the real salt in the wound as this uh, site reads is that the government dropped the arts without triggering any discernible public backlash. Despite all the evidence that art uh, impacts lives positively, we also know the public themselves often don't recognise those benefits even as they continue to enjoy them. Um, too much of a good thing, basically, is what it's saying. Uh, in 2017, the Australian Council's Third Arts uh, Participation Survey perversely revealed that a downward trend in people's attitude towards art uh, so perversely revealed a downward trend in people's attitude towards art while simultaneously showing higher than ever involvement. 98% of people reported that they participate in arts activities, but the number of people supporting public investment in the arts dropped from 85% in 2009 to 66% in 2017. The number of people believing the arts attract people who are elitist or pretentious rose over the same period from 33% to 43%. There is a confounding gap between people's engagement with art and their expressed perception of its value. Um, other thing too here is that, um, and this could just be me, but my experience is that most people sort of see art only as what's taught in that subject at school. That is not the only art. Art is um, that it's music and it's uh, theatre and, and, and films and that sort of thing. Um, Basically, any sort of performance that you're giving is an art form. Uh, so, dancing is another one. Um, it is obviously paintings and sculptures and stuff. Um, photography is another one. Um, there's a whole heap, uh, and it, it is more than just uh, painting on a canvas. Which, yeah, okay, I, I, I get it. Uh, modern art sort of has that reputation for just being couple of strokes on a, on a, on a canvas uh, and selling for ridiculous amounts of money. I understand that that's where that uh, thought's coming from, but that's not all that the arts are. Uh, and so I think there's a bit of a misconception there myself. Um, so this article finishes off with these last two uh, paragraphs. Uh, read this myself, get comfortable again. Um, our biggest leadership challenge is to find ways to understand the causes of this gap and communicate more directly with the public about the value of art. Advocacy to government will always fall short until we start to win the public argument. Uh, you get enough people in public crying out about it, eventually the government has, to, has no choice but to do something about it in the people's favour so that the people will remain happy. Uh, Pan Am at circumstances. Um, food and
Uh, to do this, we must ask where the cultural sector itself should take responsibility for losing its perceived connection to everyday life and the wider community. An example is the lack of diversity in cultural leadership. For example, only 9% of the 1,980 uh, leaders of our major, major cultural institutions are culturally and linguistically diverse, uh, and, um, and they make up uh, 39% of the Australian population. So when you've got representation of only 9% for a um, group of Australians, it is 39%. There's obviously a big issue there. Um, that's what, that's in between uh, four and five times smaller than it should be. But the research shows that the Australian cultural sector lags behind the rest of um, the economy in terms of um, have culturally and linguistically diverse uh, leadership representation, whilst the majority of the workforce in the cultural sector is female, and I think that's obviously a good point to make, uh, the most powerful positions are still stubbornly male-dominated, um, so 66% men to 34% um, women on boards, and, and this math is incorrect, this is how the article reads, 88% men to 13% women in CEO directors all across the state galleries. As I said, the maths is wrong there, it should either be 87% men to 13% women or 88% men to 12% women. Otherwise, you're equaling 101%, and percent literally means out of 100. Um, but those figures suggest that culture is not socially marginalised because it's progressive and uh, threat to power, but because it's not progressive and representative enough, which being the arts and how the culture expresses itself to the rest of society is a real weakness. Um, ticket prices for major performing arts events, the exclusive and rarefied atmospheres of state and national galleries, the ongoing uh, domination of arts coverage in, the major, in major newspapers by white men, all of those play successfully into the government's narrative that art is luxury extra rather than a staple of daily life, which it should be. Uh, our political vanishing act should be a wake-up call to prompt renewal as well as legitimate anger. But such renewal must be done in a spirit of collective action and mutual support. There are lessons to be learned from the new models of environmental leadership emerging globally. The now familiar political approach of belittling, belittling and disappearing environmental issues from government decision-making is being countered by an international movement of decentralised gr uh, grassroots groups. The tactics range from symbolic actions that maintain public visibility to building community resilience through collective policy-making, irrespective of political support. Much of this activity is dominated by a young generation who see leadership as a uh, necessary and available action rather than a position to be earned or privileged to be bestowed. Um, the only effective counter to the government's disregard of the arts is to build a more progressive cultural uh, sector, unified in diversity, that speaks directly and uh, boldly with the public. Cultural leadership must now be open to a new generation and new voices. Crucially, we need to ensure that this debate is not about the belittling of this sector or the impact on those that work in it. The diminishing of the arts affects the well-being of all Australians, and our focus must always be uh, engagement with the public, not only as audiences and consumers, but as leaders and decision makers. Um, and yeah, uh, that's all that article says. Um, it obviously does bring up a lot of good points. Read uh, states, some of the ones that I mentioned in my January video, and honestly, it tells it like it is. Um, it's not trying to say the arts um, sector is this wonderful, happy place. We still have things to own up to. Uh, we still have things that we can work on. But the fact that uh, the government seems sort of intent on quietly brushing us under the rug um, is not something that any Australian um, should knowing and just ignore. Um, but that's all I've got for today. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you uh, want to see more videos like this and be notified when I upload new ones. Um, again, the link for this uh, is in the description.
description down below uh, if you want to read it again for yourself. Uh, if I went too fast and you didn't quite understand something, the link is below for you. Uh, and until next time guys, keep your head screwed on.